Come here, Pastor. Come here. Is that your wife? Please bring your wife. of God is all over this sister right now she normally has no feelings but she she can feel her hands on her our hands on her legs and she's had no feeling in her legs can pastor tell them what's happened the power of God something is taking place right now and uh, the spirit of God is upon Delia Feeling your hands on my legs. Before? No, no. I could feel sensation before, but I couldn't feel actual feeling. This dear sister has nerve damage, and the Lord is restoring the sensation in her legs. Keep worshiping. Come on. she started going like this I thought Lord is there any strength she said no I'm doing this on purpose I'm doing this on purpose there's a recreative thing happening in her spine right now come on give Jesus some praise
my, my eyes, my eyes are seeing it. My eyes are seeing it. But my brain. Come on, somebody! video now we have the great pleasure of welcoming sister Delia Knox and her husband Levi Knox give sister Delia a mighty shout millions of viewers watching right now and you know we say all the time you know that you were paralyzed for 22 years 22. but you know that's easy for us to flip off the tongue it's easy for me to proclaim 22 years but I want you to tell us that there are people in wheelchairs right now that are watching could you tell them day to day for 22 years I can tell you that for the first 10 years, I would rise every day saying, would today be the day? Would today be the day? And I'm getting emails all across the nation and beyond with people that have been hoping and they, they've given up hope. And I know what that's like because for the first 10 years, I would rise in the morning and I would say, would today be the day? As I would lift my legs off the bed and put them on the floor and then transfer onto my wheelchair, I would say, let's see if I feel today. And then 10 years, my 10th year anniversary of the loss of the use of my legs, I decided I would not mourn the loss anymore. I decided from here on I will worship, will use that which is productive in my life as a weapon of warfare. I will turn my weapon, my, my, my instruments of productivity into weapons of warfare. And I said I will use my tongue to lift up your name everywhere I go. 
And I won't even give attention to what's going on. But I will worship you. Then for the next 10 years after that, I'm not going to tell you that every day I ignored it. Sometimes I would say, well, now it's 15. And then when it hit 20, I just knew. I just knew. Almost like, I don't know if it's going to happen anymore. Then August 27th occurred. And the Lord showed me what hope deferred really means. You see, I had, I had put hope on the shelf. I deferred it for another time. Like when you put a payment off and you defer that payment. I deferred hope. Which I believe made my body more and more because I started to think about, well, when we grow old and gray, how is my husband going to be carrying me? I started thinking about, you know, I'm going to end up in a home somewhere, a nursing home somewhere, because I would never want to burden anyone, and I never had the privilege of birthing kids naturally, obviously. And so I, I thought, I started to think like this. Well, it's just not going to happen. Something happened to me on August 27th when I came into that revival. It was when a baby came forth for prayer when two parents brought a baby. You see, before that I wanted to leave because I would stay away from scenes like that and I just wanted to roll out of there because I just didn't want to be disappointed anymore. I'm trying to be as real as I can. Go ahead, David. Go ahead. There's the power of God. I'm telling you right now. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you that every day I believed. I'm not going to tell you that. There were times that I put hope and deferred it for another time. August 27th, I came in there and I wanted to leave. But when the two parents, when a parent came, when parents came with their baby for prayer, I began to look at that baby in, in her arms. She had, the baby had a kidney disease. He had a baby, a kidney disease or something. And immediately, compassion came in my heart for that baby. And that day I was living... If you look even on my Facebook or Twitter account, Twitter account, you will see it. It was, it was about First Peter where it's talking about a baby of a life conceived of God. Think about it. A life conceived by God. And I started to envision this couple and I said, they don't come together to conceive a child that is deformed or defective. And I said, Lord, you've got to do something for that baby. And I began to cry right there in my chair. Father, you've got to do something for that baby. For that baby was conceived of incorruptible seed because of who you are, Lord. And as the parents went down, and the baby went into the arms of one of the love greeters, the baby didn't cry or anything, and I just said, look, He's safe in the arms. He's safe in the arms. And then, before I knew it, they started to think, Evangelist Nathan called my husband over. But it was in the midst of compassion that he was called over and he said, bring your wife over. Is that your wife? Bring her over. Because my heart became soft at that moment for a healing touch for that baby. Something happened and I could not, I can't explain it to you other than 
something happened within me to believe healing for that child. And then in that room when they called me over and Nathan began to pray, I was overwhelmed. And I just began to worship and began to worship. And he said, let faith arise in this woman. Now you got to know, for the longest time when people would tell me, why are you in this chair? Is it that you don't have faith? I would tell them, what makes you think I'm sick? But that night, in the midst of compassion, my heart was softened to the point where I said, Lord, I allow you to do what you need to do with my life. You are my hope. And in my mind, I just said, it was like all of a sudden I brought hope back in alignment I can't explain it to you other than I just felt the hands on my legs something happened it was like I had a Charlie horse going down and it was like Bing. and then all of a sudden I could feel them feel strength and and I didn't want to stop. <laughs> but then when I went down, and I don't know who was touching my legs. I think you were bending my knees or something. I don't know who it was. But when I could feel my knees being bent, it was like, get me back up again, please. Get me back up again. I got to do it again. See, because up until then, I thought I was moving with my hip. I could feel my feet said Lord I'm really walking yeah. Yeah.